Hey YouTube, this ought to be a quick one, and I hope the 3D printer isn't too loud in the background, but I uh, just want to do one more quick follow-up on the C128 stuff I was doing. This is a different machine. This isn't the one we modded in those other videos. This one I ran across and bought because it came with a mouse. I just really wanted the mouse. So anyway, wound up with another machine, and this one I want to do some, some quickie mods on the cheap. So instead of uh, Arduinos and lots of time-consuming stuff, you know, low-tech solutions to high-tech problems. We'll just throw some switches in there. So, uh, a bank of four dip switches fits perfectly in the, uh, the RF switch hole in the case, but, uh, never gonna use that thing again anyway. A little bit of hot glue. The hot glue will easily remove, you know, so you can undo this. I wanted to make sure I'm, I'm not, you know, destroying history or anything like that. So, uh, everything I did is, is reversible here. Um, so just, uh, four switches in the back, they plunk right in that hole, a little bit of hot glue. Uh, two of the switches aren't even used, you know, reserved for, uh, future expansion. And the other two run over to the ROMs to do switching, right? So there's your, your kernel ROM and there's your, your accessory ROM, option ROM, whatever you call it, right? So just very simple. I left one pin out of some, uh, let's zoom in a little, all this high tech stuff. So you can probably see that there's there's one pin missing on this side out of the header, and that's to keep the address line from connecting to the board. And then we use a second socket and just uh, put the the resistor across that, the pull up resistor you need for the for the address select, and uh, that way nothing's been done to the board. You can just unplug the stuff right out of the board, and you will not have a problem. So we'll uh, seat him back in so we don't bend anything. And then the other mod on the cheap, you know, that's the whole point of this video is how, how can you mod stuff on the cheap. If you want to get 80 columns working, you're kind of limited uh, to the RGBI that comes out of the back of this thing. And there's solutions out there varying in price. Some of them are somewhat cheap. Other ones are more expensive. But uh, all I did here was take pin 7 from the RGBI connector from the bottom of the board, ran this little blue jumper wire around, and hooked it up to the RCA jack on the back here. Um, and obviously disconnected the RF feed going into that RCA jack. I don't know if you can see that on there, but I just desoldered the pin that comes out of the modulator and put this wire on the jack instead. And that way you get a uh, 80 pin monochrome composite. You know, you won't get color, but if you just want to use a 128 for text or something, it'll probably do fine for you. So all that to say this, uh, this you can plug into, uh, uh, the composite input or, uh, even on newer TVs, if, uh, if you don't have good old fashioned composite available, a lot of them will sync on green and the sync signal is present there. So you can, uh, you can just plug this in usually to the green port of a, of a component input and most TVs will sync on that too. So, you know, cheap 80 column hookup, some cheap switches to, to run some ROMs around here. And, uh, and I did do the mods on this board with the, uh, uh, 32K uh, ROM support and that you can watch the old videos to see all about that. But yeah, just a, a real quick and dirty on, on how to do quick and dirty mods on the cheap to, uh, add a little bit of modern functionality to an old machine. So, uh, I hope this helps somebody and, uh, take care everybody.